we are going to lead Radha Rasa Sudanidi, bus 125. Shri Radha, the life giver of Madhupati. So, translation. May Sri Radha be pleased with us. Sri Radha gives life to Madhupati, the Krishna. Sri Radha is very distressed when there is some obstacle to the fulfillment of Krishna's desires. Sri Radha's incomparable moonlike face, which is source of delicious transcendental bliss, makes the full moon seem insignificant because its nectarian rays do not even give an atomic drop of the ambrosial effulgence of Radha's moonlight face. Sri Radha's red lips carry an ocean of fresh nectar that is the essence of sweetness. May that Sri Radha be pleased with us. The title of commentary Sri Radha the life giver of Madhupa. Commentary by Ananda Das Babaji. Sri Pada's heart is immersed in relish transcendental visions. In the previous verse, Sri Pada relished sweet mellows of Sri Radha, enjoying reversed pastimes and when the vision vanishes, he considers the world to be void without sweet relish of Swami's form and Swami's attributes. The bliss of the relish of the transcendental Supreme Lord is so great that if the aspirant experiences it once, he always remains immersed in such relish. And he loses taste for any other subject than Krishna. After crossing the stage of Anartha Migrit, cessation of bad habits, the stage of Asa, Transcendental action to the Lord appears, and the Lord's pleasure giving potency starts her work of providing transcendental relish. 
So this, this one is a little bit uh, after reading. I was, I was quite impressed. Because in the bhakti stage, we know our Ado Shraddha. At first, Shraddha is coming, some faith is coming. Then Sadhu Sangha will stand. Then Bhajana Kriya. So devotional service will start. Usually this Bhajana Kriya, Gurudev gives initiation, especially like Diksha. And then due to do our bhajan, actually bhajana kriya. We are doing devotional service, external service, and internal service. Especially from beginning, we are using this physical body. And then we chanting the slowly, slowly, Anarta Nibriti start. Anarta Nibriti stage come. Anarta is unwanted thing. Here Baba mentioned bad habits. And then more strong face, Nishita is coming. And Ruchi is coming. Ruchi is a taste. Guru Dev used to say, Ah, Jibe Daya, Nama Ruchi, Vaishnava Seva. Be merciful, Jiva, and also our Jiva, my Jiva also. And then slowly, slowly, Namarich is coming. Then Asakti is coming. Asakti is very strong attachment. So hidden path of devotion. And Nashira Nare Maharaj explain greed, very strong desire. So at that time, Raga Bhakti or Raga Nuga Bhakti will start. So this is mentioned, this is I'm so touched. Asakti appears, greed appears. Then those pleasure, pleasure giving potency starts. How works of providing the transcendental relish. So when we we have some taste and then taste increase and the strong attachment. <coughs> At that time, Ragarani is giving some some uh, Influence or start, this say, start to work providing transcendent relish. And also, it is said, Laga Bhakti will come due to association of Rashka Bhashna. In other words, 
za masi yog bajnava. Lashka bajnava. Some of you are already tasting rasa. Some are practicing Raganuga Bhakti. Or some of you are perfected this Raganuga Bhakti. So this, I was so much, this, this is very much interesting. At the stage of Asakti, and then I'm feeling from beginning we have so much bad habit or blockage, good they say blockage. So rather than you want to give mercy, but due to our blockage, we cannot taste. But the blockage is is broken. The pleasure giving potency is is kind of flow. Sometimes Guru Dev say in flow we have to be in flow. If we have blockage, that that flow is stopped. Like sometimes uh, in the river, sometimes you know uh, some big stone was you know some kind of earthquake, then then flow is blocked. Then river is like uh, many branch, small branch. They go. They cannot flow nicely. So similarly, so our devotion life, if we have a blockage, we cannot taste, we cannot go beyond. So this is, this is, I was so much impressed with Baba's comment. Gorang Sundar Prabhu, could you give us some, some insight, some enlightenment? You already said in very simple way different stages of bhakti. Actually, I can say just that up to the stage of Ashakti is a sadhana bhakti. Then is coming bhava bhakti and then is coming prema bhakti. So these three kinds of bhakti are going in the life of devotee up to the stage of perfection. But with ashakti, strong attachment for Ishtadev, devotee is practicing his sadhana bhakti. And Baba is saying from that point, Radhika starts her work of providing transcendental relish. So Hladini Shakti is becoming more prominent on that level and even visible for devotee on that level of Ashakti. You explained all these levels how devotion is growing and we can say what is the difference between ruchi and ashakti and you also explained i'm repeating your words that the ashakti is more thick and condensed level of bhakti this is ruchi which is more condensed why this ruchi is important? This is some kind of middle point <laughs> in the practicing and crucial point. Because this ruchi is helping devotee to overcome anatta ivriti. In one side and in another side, he's helping him to develop 
devotional feelings. Only higher level can help devotee to overcome lower level. If devotee has conception, first I have to overcome anarthas. Then I will start to practice Travan and Kirtana to develop my ruchi. Acharyas are saying that it will never happen because only through the ruchi taste for lila, for nama, for guna, for ishtadev, only through this taste, devotee will overcome anarthas very easily. And this is one of the biggest mistake, maybe misconception, when some devo sometimes devotees say, think first I have to be pure and then I will go on the level of ruchi, ashakti and other levels of bhakti. But we should know one thing that only something which is more, more higher can help to overcome this low level. Yeah. So Ruchi is very important and crucial point in these categories of bhakti. And Ruchi can be developed and nourished, like Jayanandaji said, in the association of devotees, Rasik devotees, because they have a Ruchi. We should listen, we should read, we should remember their words, their explanations, which are full of rasa. These kind of words will bring us some small ruchi, and the more ruchi devotee has, he will be very happy to leave his anarthas, because like Jainandaji said, it is obstacle. I don't want this obstacle because I know what is the higher taste. If I don't know what is the higher taste, I don't have any reason to overcome my conditional life. But if I have a higher taste and I nourish this higher taste, he will, it will condense in the form of my attachment to Ishtadev. First devotee has the Ruchi for Ishtadev, and then attachment. Ruchi is not enough. It's enough to overcome Anarthas. But it's not enough. It must be condensed to come to the point of strong attachment. And we should know that this attachment is a feeling. It's not something mental. It's a feeling from the heart. And this feeling is the sign of intervention of Hladini Shakti. Without Radhika, without her merciful glance, her merciful desire, help, how can I feel attachment for her? It's not possible. She has to respond. Yes, I want you also. You want me? This is Ruchi. That's okay. But I also want you. And then devotee starts to feel it's unavoidable, actually. It starts to feel attachment. <laughs> and then the other stages are going on. But this Ashakti, when devotee attained this Ashakti level, his life, devotional life, are becoming more easier. Vishwana Chakravati, Janandaji, remember me or correct me, 
Vishwana Chakrati Thakur uh, somewhere, Madhurya Kadambini or somewhere, he is saying, um, teacher of devotion is taking. Who is the teacher of devotion? Jai Shri Radha. Jai Shri <laughs> Teacher of devotion. Taking devotee for the hand. And she is guiding him. She doesn't, he doesn't have to endeavor anymore. Before he was a little bit struggling, but when she takes devotee for the hand and say, come, then job is finished. <laughs> Radhika is taking now devotee to the another levels and her maid servants. <laughs> so this is my understanding why Ashakti is in, uh, Ruchi is important. Then Ashakti is important to establish myself in Staibar and Ishtadev. Then my heart is prepared for next stage of sadhana, bhava sadhana bhakti. Thank you. Very nice. Wonderful explanation. Mm -hmm. So the Lord's place of potency starts her work of providing the transcendental relish. As a result, a sincere devotion, Nishaya, firm determination appears. And as a result, Bhajan, the aspirant becomes free from bad habits and gradually advances to the stage of Ruchi. Relish and Asakti attachment. This firm determination has been beautifully described by Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Pad in his Sarata Darshan commentary on Bhagavad Gita 241. Vishwana writes, the devotional practice of glorifying the Lord, <coughs> remembering Him, and serving His Lord's feet, as it has been instructed to be to me by my spiritual master, is my goal and my life. It is impossible for me to give this up under any circumstances. This is what I desire, and this is my duty. I have no other than this, and I don't desire anything else, even in dreams. It may make me happy, it may make me unhappy. It may liberate me from material existence, or it may not. That makes no difference to me at all. Such firm determination is possible in unadulterated devotion. So this is, this is, I think, generally speaking, 
maybe Baba say in the, in maybe general way, but for us, we are aspirant for become you know try to become Radha Dasi. This is I feel this is kind of one pointedness because our goal is very simple. Our goal is our Ishtadeva's pleasure. Our, our goal is Ishtadeva, Srimate Radharani. If Srimate Radharani will please, but we are not, that service of Radharani sometimes makes me happy, sometimes makes me unhappy. Or it may liberate me from material existence, or it may not. But it, it doesn't matter, because our concern is for the pleasure of Shurimati Radhara, or Radha's Moha. We don't care our pleasure. <laughs> that, that is, that is Radha Dasi. And, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explain in Shiksha Shtaka. I think last bus. Ashri Shaba Parata Pinasuma. Adara Shana Marmahatanka. Yata Tata Pinadatu Rampato. Matpra Nata Tusayavana. If Krishna disappear in my vision, or Krishna maybe treat me very harshly at any circumstance. Krishna's my supreme Lord, my, my, my worship of Lord, my beloved. I think Manjari is, is thinking, Manjari is instead of Radharani. Sometimes Radharani may treat me harshly. Sometimes Radharani chastises Trasi Manjari. Because sometimes Trasi Manjari tried to bring such belt, which Radhika left somewhere else. At that time, some other Radhika find out. But, and then Swamini find out, oh, Radhika could know Turashi bring such bed, my such bed. What are doing? I don't like what you're doing. And then Radhika chastises Turashi Manjari like anything. Go away. And then Turashi Manjari was crying. And then Radhita Saki could understand. Hey, Torashi, why are you crying? Did you make some mistake? Actually, Radhita Saki, she knows. Oh, you bring such belt, but uh, I found out, but it's not your fault. I found out. It's not your fault. Okay, I can talk to your Swamini. Then Rarita Saki talk. And then Radharani pacify. Again, Torashi Manjari could do intimate seva for Radharani. <laughs> Or sometimes Radharani become angry, sometimes Radharani may not this you know may like a displeased or angry. Something happening. But our concern is how to breathe. Our Swami. Or sometimes we also, we try to please Gurudev. But knowingly, unknowingly, 
could then become very angry. Sometimes we fly, no? Oh my God, what to do? Could they become angry with me? But our attachment and for love for Gurudev may not change even a little bit. That is loyalty. Many times Gurudev checking us. Are you really surrendering? <laughs> Do you want to follow me? Do you have big ego? He's, he's checking our behavior. Do you acting your ego or your love? Do, do you want to surrender? Do you want to offer your ego to me? Or you want to keep your ego with you? So this is, this is, I feel this is kind of, you know, for us also, anytime it is happening. <laughs> so this is, I feel this is like kind of manjari, manjari spa. Maybe I can say something. Sure. Because this firm determination is the result of someone who has a strong faith, strong confidence. He doesn't have doubts. If we have a doubts, it means that we don't have a faith and we cannot be determined in attaining our goal. So this word, Nishchaya Atmika, <laughs> I saw this word and it's remember Nishchaya. Nishchaya. Rupa Goswami in Sri Upadeshamita is saying that this Nishchaya confidence is one of the favorable items for developing bhakti. This confidence, it means the devotee is completely confident in his guru, like Jayananda just said, in his way of teaching. He is confident in his Gurudev's instruction that it will help him. He is confident in all his, in all acharyas who can help him to come to his goal simply because he has a faith. And there is a verse in Bhagavad Gita somewhere that someone who doesn't have a faith, he doesn't have happiness in his life. Something like this. He is lacking this happiness. He will never be happy. Yeah, Krishna is saying he will never be happy. Because this strong faith, confidence in my path and in my goal, bring him determination to go over all obstacles and brings him on the point, like Jayananda just say, even if it's difficult to do something, I don't care. I, in all circumstances, I will do what my Guru Dev instructed me. And this is my only duty. It doesn't matter if I am happy or if I'm not happy. This is the sign of faith or confidence, nishchaya, of someone who is very determined to attain his taibhav and also Ishtadev. Then he is approaching 
to all process of bhakti with open heart and open mind. Yes, there is some ego present, but if he has a strong determination, he can recognize himself, his own ego, and pray to Vaishnavas, to Guru, to Nitai, please give me mercy to destroy this poison which blockage me in attaining my goal. So this nishchaya is the sign of someone who is very sincere, faithful, and who is very determined to attain his goal. I just wanted to say that. Radhi, Radhi. Yes, beautiful. I, I, I remember, Prabhupada, I think one purport. If someone who, someone who is doubtful, he, he's not happy in this life, also next life. Because if we have doubtful, if we have doubt, means we, if we don't have faith, then Guru Devi said, no hope. So if doubtful of Guru Devi or Ishta Devi, no hope. Then, then what about to attain love of Godhead? Prema. It's impossible. So Guru Dev said to, I don't know, today or to yesterday, to destroy faith is the biggest sin. So our association, Sadhu Sangha, means make, make strong our faith unto our Ishtadeva, unto our Guru Dev. Because if we lose faith, <laughs> then everything collapses. The truth. Even in this material field, <laughs> so if, if I lose faith, my wife or my husband, then the what is happening? Always arguing, fighting. Okay, I divorce. <laughs> These things are coming. So Guru Dev is saying. Actually, Guru Dev get blessing from Parama Guru Dev. Your disciple will be in in harmony. <laughs> so I want to share a little bit. Guru Dev said, traditional way, traditional Vaishnava behave, don't fight, don't cut relations. But modern way, <laughs> fighting and cut the relations. So Guru Dev said, we can add no problem. But we don't want to exclude anybody. So we want to be in harmony. Because this, this is Raga Bhakti. <laughs> if we are not in harmony, then how can we practice this loving devotion like, like Raga Bhakti? So Gurudeva is teaching us, is, you know, is very, very, uh, how do you say? Guru Dev gave us very precious teaching. 
All problem coming from due to our ego. So if we give up ego, then harmony is coming. And then Guru Dev said, <laughs> very, very, you know, this time also I feel Guru Dev so merciful. What do you mean surrendering? Surrendering means offer to your your ego to Guru Dev. Then Guru Dev drink disciples' ego. But he cannot, he cannot go into the, this heart because this heart rather more high there. So therefore, his, he, ego stop this part. Guru Dev sometimes drink our ego. Then sometimes become sick. Oh my God. What kind of disciple we are? <laughs> we want to we want to help Guru Dev. But instead of we are Guru Dev is always helping us. Like a Guru Dev is like a mother. Children, even children makes so many mistakes. But the Guru Dev does not give up children. Or all, always care. This love and the care, I'm running here. So this is very, uh, here in Brindavan is so pure. And the influence of Yoga Maya is quite strong and uh, more easy to do anything or something mistake, immediately the action may come. And we can, we can see other devotees' behavior. We could see our, our heart. <laughs> oh, I have such and such ego. Oh, I may influence of Lava Puja Pratista. Oh, what is devotion? What's the meaning of pure devotion? This is, uh, I'm running here, <laughs> honestly. So, just uh, I want to share something. Sorry. Okay, we continue. Unadulterated devotion means devotion which is filled with the desire to please the beloved. And which is completely devoid of any desire for personal happiness. This unadulterated devotion finds its culmination in the service of Sri Because there is such firm determination 
in the service of Sri Radha. A swift sensation of unwanted habits and deep realizations in bhajan are granted. This is a guarantee. <laughs> Wow. The aspirant experiences it as if Sri Radharani takes him or her along by the hand. This is also, this is very, very sweet. Sometimes it is a shastra. If we practice bhakti, even blind person does not go into the ditch. So this is because this Radharani is Guiding takes us to the goal by hand. And if we become manjari, then we take Swamini to the moha by hand. And because Swami is like mother, and if we are a child or baby, we need always her care. But if we, we, if we become a little bigger, like 11 years, then sometimes we take Swamini Hey, Swamini, don't worry. I'm here. I'm here. I can take you to the, your beloved Moha. Don't worry. So this is the beauty of loving exchanges. So therefore, if some devotee could feel this experience, oh, Radharani, will helping me as all, all the time. That devotee has no anxiety. <laughs> because always Radharani is hand is there. Always Radharani is love is there. This is very beautifully explained, this Baba. This is amazing. Shripat Prabodhananda is completely fixed in the lotus feet of Sri Radha and his transcendental visions are even more vivid than a direct meeting with the Lord. Bereft of any experience, his heart is unstable and aches of separation. Then, Shripad has another transcendental vision of a past. Shripad, in his king form, accompanies Radha 
wenn sie das auch du nicht frisch. Meanwhile, Shema Sundar was intercepted by Chandraval and her girlfriend's partner in Shaivya while he was on his way to meet Sri Radhika. Oh my God. Chandraval was hiding between the vines and the trees. And as soon as she heard the jingling of Krishna's ankle bells, she came out of hiding, held his hand and said, You come walking down this path so much. I heard the gene of your antibodies. I was desperate about your association with Radha and felt deprived. Oh, friend. I won't let you go. I will keep you in my heart. And then, thus, I can always see you. Listen, Osakis. Carefully take him to my abode. Tonight, we will deprive beautiful Radhika of her Nagara's association. After Chandra we spoke with us, Tersakis took Krishna by the hand and brought him to her abode. The fallen Chandra sings. Hari shivered out of fear of Radha. <laughs> We can see here how Chandravali has to make different endeavors to attain Krishna. She is hiding to stop him on his way to Radhika because he is going to Radhika and she has to come in front of him and say, stop, stop, don't go there. I want to be with you. He is not running after her. So she has to put endeavor to stop him, <laughs> to convince him, hmm. and to give instruction to her sakis to bring him in the kunja. But Radhika doesn't have to make any endeavor because Krishna is running after her. He is eager to meet her. Because Radhika is most present in his heart than this girl. We don't want to mention her name even. Yes, because she is obstacle to my Radharani. Some Gyanis will say, yes, this is good because it helps relishing the Rasa. I don't care for this Gyana explanation. She is obstacle. And because of that, I don't want to mention her name and her girlfriends. And only I can see here that she has to put great endeavor to stop the Krishna and my Swamini doesn't have to do it. 
only if the flavor of my Swamini comes in his nostrils, he will run in that direction. Only if the jingling of my Swamini's ankle bells sounds so sweetly and Krishna hears it, he will run immediately in that direction. So Manjaris are witnessing this, but they are always partial on the Radha's side. Radhe, Radhe. I remember Goranga Sundra Pabu's saying, you know, it is style. And uh, one day, Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami is using some kind of cup, but uh, this cup is very small. So some, uh, and uh, some people is thinking, oh, if he has a little bigger cup, then he can eat more because he has so denounced. One day, the devotee brought this, you know, little bigger cup, maybe deep, maybe deep by deep. And then Raghunath Das was saying, by the way, where did you get this cup? <laughs> that devotee said, oh, this Sakistan. <laughs> then Laguna said, what are you doing? I don't want to hear these, these words. I don't, I have nothing to do with this place. <laughs> like this, <laughs> this I remember going on. <laughs> because Sakistan is this, we don't want to, we don't want to mention that name is place. <laughs> so this, Nagunath Das was so style for Radhika. He does not want to hear her rival's name or even something belong to or come from her village, her place. He does not want to use it. This is style, style Baba. That's I remember by your inspiration. <laughs> Srimati Radhika does spend the night in great distress. And when her hero finally showed up, in the morning, with all the signs of Chandrala is love making of his body. She adopted the moon called Kandita. Shivarupa Goswami defines this moon. When the lover shows up too late at the dry skin spot and he wears the mark marks of another girl's enjoyment on his body. The beloved assumes the moon called Kandita. She then breathes deeply out of anger and comes south. So Shimati sarcastically welcomes another back. Radhika is saying, Radhika. Nice. Radhika. <laughs> <laughs> or you continue. We have to come in the mood of Radhika. 
true manja is how deep her anger is uh, and she becomes silent first then she starts to sarcastically speak this sarcastic speech of radhika ooh, it's coming like an arrow in the krishna's heart because she is very jealous and angry. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita he said, sometimes Radhika is Dira, sometimes Adira, and sometimes Dira Adira. Dira means calm and very soft when she is angry. She is using some mild words to chastise her lover. It depends on her mis his mistake. She is Dira. Sometimes she is Adira, very, very angry, and she is using sarcastic <laughs> words which are very sharp, like uh, arrows to the Krishna's heart. And sometimes she is dira adira, little mild and little sharp, mixing. So these three characteristics are correct of her behavior in the mood in the mood of mana is behavior of Mahabhava Swarupini. Mahabhav Radhika has this kind of ability and qualities to speak different sarcastic, ironic way, in a mild way and in the heavy way. Depends on Krishna's mistake. <laughs> so for the beginning, he is deeply, he is deep in her anger, her anger concentrating, becoming so thick and condensed, but she is silent. And then, sarcastically, she explodes. And now we can listen. I don't know what's going on, but we can listen to her words. <laughs> Very nice that you have come this morning. So nice, my friend. My day will be very good now that I saw your face in the morning. Oh, friend, your face, your face has dried up. Who has decorated you like this? Seeing it makes me feel very unhappy. All glories to you, my friend. Turn around so that I can see your moon my face. Oh! Who was who has beautified your face with eyeliner? The beauty of that spot of vermilion enchants the minds of even the great sages. Your body is bruised by scratches of sharp nails. Yes and bites of sharp, sharp teeth. And there is a distinct mark of a bangle on your chest. Have you spent the night as a woman, although you are a man? I see covered by a blue sun. 
this beautiful called footwork looks nicely on your chest. Now, tell me frankly, why have you come here? Then Nagara looks in all four directions. Hide his face with his scars. Although he tries to wash off his shame, he cannot clean up. This is the ocean of cleverness of our beloved Radhika. She is a embodiment of love. But she is also embodiment of cleverness. Because in such a smart, clever, pure, love cleverness, way she is dealing with this debusher, womanizer. To put him a shame and at the same time by glorifying He's making love with another woman. How she is glorifying him? By mentioning each sign in scratch, each scratch on her body, on his body, in his face. So we should meditate on these sweet words of angerness and cleverness of Srimati Radhika. And we should meditate on this beautiful scene, how Manjaris are standing beside and witnessing this scene when Radhika is chastising her lover. And Manjaris are so happy, this is Manjari Bab mood, when they see how Krishna is putting his head down out of shame. And then he is very sweet for Manjaris because my Radhika ashamed him in a, such a beautiful, clever, sarcastic way. Daddy. Srimati becomes angry. And Nagara tries everything to please her, but to no avail, no success. Finally, he breaks down crying. <laughs> Seeing <coughs> all his hopes are frustrated. Srimati also covers her lower head with her veil and starts crying so then one Saki comes and tells her you don't have to try and cover your head anymore. Shyamasundara has also left crying.
I don't think he's going to come back anymore. It's better for you to calm down and go home. As soon as she not hears, Krishna is gone. She won't come back. She becomes stark. Feeling regret. She drops her veil and actually said, says, it's okay. What are you saying? Is he gone? He loves me so much. Is left after such a trifle deep of mine. Saki, I was so foolish girl to be angry with him. Why did you let him go? Quickly go. Bring him back. Otherwise, I cannot maintain this body anymore. And then Saki replies, Radhe, you won't get him anymore. He was crying so much at your words. Like a great offender. But still, you remain angry. Now, who knows where he has gone? Feeling miserable, offended, and agitated. Even if we search for him now, where would we find him? Hearing the Sakis words, Shrimati becomes unlimitedly agitated and sad. And she says, Oh, friend, what did I do? I callously threw away a jewel from my own apron. You were right here. Couldn't you stop me from doing all these foolish things? Oh, I have callously thrown away my life's treasure. Saying this, she strikes her head. And her breasts with her hands and laments. Love is blind. Therefore, I could not see at first that this Krishna is a womanizer. I quarrel. And this makes my heart burn.
Radhe, Radhe, we don't hear you. Nade nade, sorry, our electricity got off, and I'm now tethering, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it's maybe very slow. So, hopefully, the please, that not speaker, no speaker, please, um, the video off. あ、ちょっと ね、ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。ね、ね。
along with my peak, my pains, and shame have also fled and my life became uncertain. Rinda says, Oh, chaste, but temperamental woman, such is love. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. Such is the love for Krishna. This is the words of Radhika. In one moment, she is angry with him. And the next moment, she is regretting <laughs> because of her angerness. We have to feel these balas. Because in both of these balas are rasa, flavor of love, and gives Krishna ananda. When Radhika is angry on Krishna, she is not angry because of herself. She is angry because of him, but because she wants to show him her beautiful bhava alankaras, emotional ornaments in which Krishna enjoys to see her angerness on her face, to hear through her mouth, through her voice. He is enjoying this angerness more than when they are united. This is the Krishna's words from Chaitanya Charitamrita. He is saying openly and very honestly, I like when my devotee is quarrel with me, anger with me. I like it more than when he is mild, when he is submissive to me. I like to see his angerness on me. And Radhika is the best example of this angerness, because this kind of ang angerness is not the symptom of false ego. This kind of angerness is the symptom of purest transcendental love. And because of that is so sweet. Without this pure love, this angerness will be manifestation of false ego, materialistic way. But Radhika is transcendental personality, embodiment of pure love. And when she manifests angerness, then her face, her eyebrows, her eyes, even reddish eyes, her voice are the ornaments of her love and desire to please Krishna. Because she knows his heart. And because of his satisfaction, she is manifesting her angerness. And immediately after that, she manifests these ornaments of regrettings. Her face is a pale, her voice is trembling. Her breath is also trembling when she is speaking these regretting words. And this kind of signs, symptoms of regrets also gives a Krishna great pleasure. So Radhika is the only one 
who can give the Krishna the most pleasure from all Rajavasis because she is satisfying his deep desire for Sringar, amorous pastimes. And now she is regretting what Andakaji read in this paragraph and said, such is the love for Krishna. What can I do? Love is blind. <laughs> love, pure love is specially blind. Mm. And what can I do? And also <laughs> Please repeat, Jananda, we didn't hear you. So that is what I said, that is crazy. <laughs> I say crazy. Oh, <laughs> Pagar. <laughs> Pagar. Radhika is prema pagalini. Crazy out of love. Because pure love makes her crazy, mad, and intoxic. And her madness makes Krishna even more mad. This is the beautiful exchange of pure love between Yuga Lakishore. And this is the greatest gift which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu give Jiva Sinkali Yuga to attain this position to witness this beautiful exchange of love, exchange of different waves of emotions. This is the greatest merciful gifts of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Without him, we would never listen to these subjects. And we would never be able to relish this subject. Only because mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, causeless mercy, Audarya, is like a cloud upon all of us we can relish this, otherwise it will never be possible. That is. This burning sensation is a well-known feature of love. Although you see his faults, you cannot become angry with him. Rather, it is a fault to become angry with him. And the lover will, will have to repay. Radhika cannot find consolation for the listeners. Because to turn it to her. So, this is important thing, that Radhika cannot find full consolation with her sakis. With Visham oh, Sneha, Visham Sneha or Sama Sneha, sakis, they are equal to her. And in one moment, they take a partial side on Krishna. And they are, they are speaking that this is a her fault. This is Saki Bhav. Manjari Bhav will never speak like this. But friends, they are allowed to do it because they are equal. And they have Sanchari Bhav for Radhika 
and they are very good in their feelings towards Krishna. And because of their, their bhava, their bhava allowed them to put the guilt to fault on Radhika, not Manjaris. Manjaris are witnessing this. And they are very always on the side of Shrimati Radharani. Always partial on Shrimati Radharani. And this is the reason why we call it Bhavo Lassa Rati. Always on the side of Radhika with full passionate emotions, Bhava, which are bringing Ulas, this joy to Manjaris and also to Shimati Radharani. She couldn't find consolation with her girlfriends. They blamed her. And she is trying to excuse herself in front of them. So, Goranga Sundar Prabhu, I have one question to you. So, here, <clears throat> Radhika cannot find consolation with her girlfriend. Even, even Radhika Saki or Vishaka Saki. So, our question is, when Mahaprabhu time in Gambira, so, Swarpa Damodara and Ramanandaya try to console Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, they are Saki. Rarita Bishaka. So our question is how Swarpadamandara Ramanandaya consoled Mahaprabhu. Very clever question which is logical actually when we hear these subjects it, this kind of question is perfectly logical actually my understanding when you were talking now what is coming to me now we cannot prepare the question we cannot prepare the answer <laughs> it's coming yes so my feeling is actually that to the certain point Swarup Damodar and Ramananda Roy could console Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he went in this mood of separation of Radha Bhava. They could to the certain point and Acharya said they console so console him by reading the books, singing the books, uh, singing different songs according to the specific bhava, knowing the mood of Goranga. They console him, but they couldn't console him completely when he came in the mood of Manjari Bhava. In Gabira, no. Yes, please say. Okay. So another question is <clears throat> that I understand this, but you, you know, it's very also nice. So our question is: Is Swarpa Damodara, Lari, you know, and Ramandaya, they are? understanding Manjari Baba or not. Or they are coming to taste Manjari Baba or not. So this is this is uh, actually rather rather charam 
Baba <laughs> is put to you know question. This is very interesting point. So I would like to hear your 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 comments. Or 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 somebody anybody could do some some feeling. This is also good. So we want to hear and we want to relish this. Yeah, it would be very nice if someone else can share. You yeah, know, no, no also, you know, I want I would, yeah, your 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 comments also. I want to say that in this moods of Saki Bhav and Manjari Bhava, nothing is black and white. Sakis, they know they love Manjaris. And they know that Manjaris are completely on the side of Radhika, loyal, like you said, loyal to Shemati Radhika, out of their highest love for Radhika. They know that. They have interaction in, interaction in their relationship. They know that. And Sakis are doing as much as they can do to console Radhika. But in the same time, they know that Manjaris are more expert in this. So the question is, does, did Ramananda Roy and Swarup Damodar tasted the Manjari bath? Isn't it? Yes. In certain sense, they tasted Rupa Manjari. When he wrote this beautiful Lalita Madhava, Vidagda Madhava, they were completely amazed how it's possible. And in that way, they tasted sublime position of Rupa Manjari toward Radhika. They tasted it, but they didn't change the bow. They didn't change their own stai bow. But they could, to the certain point, they could taste. But it will not change their stai bow. On the other side, Manjaris understand, they understand the bhava of Sakis, of course, because they are living together. They are always together. Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. And they feel each other. But the Manjaris are so fixed in their staibhav that they will never change and become <laughs> Sakibhav. And for certain Lilas, Sakis are allowing Manjaris to serve Radhika because they know you can serve her much better. You can console her much better than we. And, and on the certain levels, Lilas, Sakis are serving Radhika in their specific mood, nourishing her mood, nourishing her angerness sometimes. And at the same time, Manjaris are witnessing it. Little aside, like a seer, viewers. But I cannot say that Sarup Damodar tasted fully Manjari Bhava. I can say that he got some glimpses of Manjari Bhava, but not to change his own Bhava, Stai Bhava. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. Mm, very nice, very nice. Yeah. Or, or anybody or somebody want to give us some comments, <coughs> always welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. Time is coming. <laughs> so, Goranga Sundar Prabhu, thank you very much. And all, all, every, you know, anybody who at join this Sangha, thank you very much. Radhe Radhe, thank you. So we are sorry, Gurudev, a little bit uh, sick, so therefore today Gurudev could not attend this Sangha. So please pray for Gurudev. <laughs> Kalavati Kunja, Janandaji, now. You are in Kalavati Kunja? Yes, yes. Uh -huh, okay, because. Yes. Because, uh, so Gopinata Baya told us maybe let Guru Dev, you know, little relax and, uh, you know, take rest. That's better. So nice. Give our Dandavats and embraces to our beloved Guru Dev. Yes. Please. Yes. I'm sorry for my mistakes and I'm sorry. No, 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 no. If you are there, more taste is coming, more rasa is coming, more ruchi and asakti is coming. <laughs> Thank you very much.